Well, hello everyone. Welcome. My name is Steve Childs. I'm the senior pastor at Chartel Church of God, and this is my weekly devotional uh, called Straight from the Heart. And uh, glad that you're joining me today. Um, as we get rolling here, as you come on board, uh, please uh, put your name in the comments. Let me know that you're here and uh, give me a shout out. Let me know that you're watching and uh, just love to know who's who's here. Both my congregational members here in Oklahoma City and those of you who track with me from across country always love seeing you in there. So let me know that you're watching and uh, as, as we're tuning in. Hey, let me, uh, let me just share just a couple of things as we get going today. Um, um, one of the things I want to mention to you is uh, I've been doing a series on Sunday morning uh, called Walk This Way and been looking at this whole um, idea of walking with God and what does that look like. And um, as we've been doing that, we've been kind of looking at different verses that talk about, you know, kind of walking like this. We talked about walking in faith and it matters who you walk with and, and trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, following his path, all of that. Um, last Sunday, uh, I did a message called When the Path Gets Scary. And I've had so much feedback on that message that I just want to encourage you, uh, for those of you who may not have seen that, um, to, to tune into that, especially if you're going through a challenging time in your life or maybe you've got some scary circumstances that uh, you're facing or there are some uh, things that are kind of hanging over your head. Hey, uh, this will be a great message for you. Um, and we take it from the, the passage from Psalm 23:4, where it says, even though I I walk through life's darkest valley. Um, I will not be afraid for you are with me. And uh, I kind of unpack that idea of how do we, what do we really do uh, when fear starts gripping us and we need to keep walking. And as a part of that message, I, I shared a testimony from a young lady from our church who allowed me to read her story. And it is an incredibly powerful, powerful story. So again, if you weren't able to be there or tune into that, that was this last week's message, When the Path Gets Scary. And uh, you can go to our church website uh, to watch of that. Um, but the easiest way for any of you who want to track with any of my stuff, you can go to my personal website, which is godswordforyoutoday.com. And uh, godswordforyoutoday.com. And when you go there, uh, there's links that you can click that you can read my daily devotional. Um, you can follow what I'm doing on Sunday or follow, find, find those, ver uh, those uh, services or those messages. Or you can actually find these that I do on Wednesday. You can watch the current one or you can go back and watch any of them that I've done. And uh, all of that kind of stuff is there. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to email me. Or again, put your question in the comment and I will, I will respond to you. Again, a lot of you jumping on board. I'm glad that you're here. Um, and again, please let, let me know that you're on. Just put your name in the comments so I know that you're watching. And as I share today, uh, anything that you'd like me to respond to, put that in there and I'll get back to you on that. And as always, if there, uh, if you would like a copy of my notes from what I'm doing uh, in this series, I'm wrapping up today. Be more than happy to send those to you via Facebook or email if you want to send me your email address. You ready? Here we go. Uh, I want to... Um I want to finish this series today. For the last few weeks here, at the beginning of this month of January, I've been looking at uh, this whole idea of how do we really become the people that God wants us to be. It seems like every year at the new year, uh, we have uh, resolutions that we make or ideas of, you know, kind of who we want to be and things we want, you know, we, we want to happen in our life. And uh, so often we fall short of that. And so I thought I wanted to take some time to just really walk through this idea of seven steps to a new you. Um, just in, in quick review, I talked about at the very beginning, um, you know, when do we change and unpack how that whole, the whole process of change happens. Uh, and then as I started going through the seven steps, I started with ask the question, what do I sense God is up to in me? I just think that's a great question to begin been with. I'm going to kind of circle back to that a little bit today. Uh, step two is decide what you're willing to lose in order to possess what you need to gain. And I just think that is such a huge thought. Um, you know, you, if you're going to make room for something new, 
You know, it's likely going to have to lose something old, old ways of doing things, old ways of thinking, old ways of behaving. Uh, step three, recruit those you need to help you become a new you. If I could give you one gift, it would be this, the humility um, and hunger to not be afraid to reach out and invite some other people into your life to really help you become this person that God wants you to become. And those people are out there, and I unpack that whole idea as well. Step four, um, I talked about last week, was embrace the attitudes that you'll need to grow. Um, sometimes it's... Um, our attitudes become our obstacle. Uh, one old adage says, you know, it's your attitude that will determine your altitude. And there's a lot of a lot of truth to that. Some of us don't move forward, not because we can't, listen very carefully, but because we think we can't. And believe it or not, how you think um, and the attitudes that you develop can either be your best friend or they can be your worst enemy. And I, I unpacked that a little bit last week. I wrapped up last week talking about developing the habits that make your hope reality. And we don't, we don't change because we want to change. We change because we strategically put the habits that we need in place to make that change happen. And I impact all of that. Again, all of those things are in my notes and, and with details. If you want a copy of that, I'd be happy to email that to you. You can put that in the comments or, or email me. I'd be happy to send that to you. Today, I want to give you the last two, and then next week we're going to move on to another topic and move forward. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Step six, decide what the biggest and best changes in your life that you can make. Decide what are the biggest and best changes in your life that you could make. Um, in my notes, I put a statement to myself and said, you can't change everything at once. So decide what needs to be first. Let me say that again. You can't change everything at once. So decide what needs to be first. Now, here, here's why this is so important. Um, when I'm talking with individuals about making changes in their life or we're sitting down and, and setting goals for, for helping someone kind of through that process, one of the things that's easy to, to get kind of paralyzed by is when you look at your life and you go, I've got so many changes I need to make. I need to change this. I need to change that. I need to change this over here. Um, and when I'm doing this, particularly like when I'm working with my staff uh, or pastors who really want to move forward, I say, you know, it's easy to become paralyzed by this whole, you know, uh, uh, array of things that need to happen in your life. But what are the what are the three things? What are the two or three things that if you could gain ground on those? Those would take you the furthest. In other words, what really are the biggest and best changes? I, I know that we all have room to grow in all areas of our life. I know that, you know, there's all kinds of things that we could do that would make us more uh, than we are and better than we are and all that kind of stuff. But man, when, if you really want change to happen, think about it this way. Think, think about what are those one or two things, if I could just do those things, man, those would be the things that would really move me uh, a lot further and a lot faster toward becoming the man or woman of God that I really want to be. These are the changes that I really need to make. Um, and say, well, Pastor Steve, how do I, how do I figure out what those are? Let me, let me give you a few thoughts, okay? Uh, the first one is this goes back to my first thought at the very beginning. Seek God. Seek God. Remember what I said very, at the very beginning of this whole uh, series. There is no one who knows you better than your Heavenly Father. There is no one who understands um, more of what you need to be and become than your Heavenly Father. There is, there is no one who can help you more than your Heavenly Father. And there is no one who loves you more. So when, when you really want to begin and say, man, what are, the, what are the two or three things? Now, you can list a whole bunch, but when you're really trying to narrow that down, sit with God a little bit and say, God, help me laser in on those couple of things that if I could just do these, I, I could really become more of who you want me to be. Um, one of my favorite verses in Scripture, and it's a verse that, quite frankly, um, I try to pray every single day of my life. 
um, as a man, husband, father, pastor, and it's this from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Here's what he says. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Now, why I love this verse so much is that in Psalm 139, the, the psalmist has already talked about the fact that God knit me together in my mother's womb. God knows me um, all the days of my life. You, um, you, know, you know me better than everyone else. But then he gets to the end and, he, and he's saying, God, seek me and know me. And, and the idea behind that, it, it, which I love, is that, Lord, help me know me like you know me. Help me uh, understand me like you see. Help me to see the, the anxiousness that you see. Help me to see the wicked things that you see. Help me see me like you see me. And that's just a great prayer. If you want to know what the biggest and best changes are, seek God. Start, we'll start with that. Here's the second thing I, I want to encourage you to do. Do a you review. Do a you review. In other words, sit down. Um, even take, take out a sheet of paper and, and ask yourself a few of these questions. And again, these are all in my notes if you want them. One of the questions is, where, where do I feel like uh, I'm lacking the most in my life? You know, when I think about uh, my life, when I think about my life at home, my life at work, my life and my journey with God, uh, how I am out in public, where, where do I feel that I'm really lacking? Where do I feel like I'm just missing it? Um, that'll help me. Second question, what part of me gives me the most trouble? You know, when I look back at this last year behind me, what, what part of myself gave me the most trouble? Was it my, was it my temper? Um, was it my lack of self-control? Um, you know, was it my um, not choosing the right people to be around me? Um, you know, what, what was it that gave me the most trouble? What was it that I, I was always having to fix, okay? That's a great, that's a great, great question to ask. Third question to ask is, what am I most embarrassed about? You know, when I think of my life and I, and I think of myself standing before people or standing before God, what am I most embarrassed about? Um, you know, what, what is it that, you know, I, I, really, I really want this to be different? And, you know, what, whatever that embarrassment, that, that, that might give you a clue of one of the biggest and best things that you can deal with. And, and here's one. This, and this last question is really internal and it's really scary. Here it is. What would I be horrified about if people knew? What would I be horrified about if people knew? Now, come on. It's just us. And, and let's, let's go straight to the heart with this, okay? Sometimes we have secret places in our hearts and our lives. Sometimes we have things that um, no one knows about but us. Um, they may be habits, they may be addictions, they may be our thought life, um, they may be the things that we make people think that we're doing, that we're not doing. Um, but what are the things that if they, if, 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 if all of a sudden people knew, they would be, hor you'd be horrified, okay? And why not fix that and lose the horror behind it, okay? Okay? Seek God, do a you review. Here's the third way that you can decide what the biggest and best things, you, changes you can need to make, is ask a few of those closest to you. Now, I know this is really scary, um, but if you, if you really want to take a step forward, Find a few people and ask them that question. Hey, I'm trying to move my life forward in my life, my walk with God and becoming more of who I know he wants me to be. Um, you know me, you know, can you give me some feedback on some changes you think might be good for me? And I know that's a scary question to ask, um, but if you ask the right people, you know what, you can get some great feedback from that. Now, who, who do you need to ask? Again, a couple thoughts, these are in my notes. Ask people who are honest. Ask people who are honest. Look at me. Make eye contact. Yes, we need people in our lives who love us enough to tell us the truth. Now, why this is so important is you and I both know there are some people, if you say, what changes do you think I need to make? They love you so much that they are afraid of hurting your feelings, so they're not going to be honest with you. 
And you know what? Those people, you know, you love having them around because they kind of cheer you on, but they're not helpful in times like that. You need people who love you enough to tell the truth. So who are the people that are going to be honest with you? Okay. Secondly, you need people who truly know you. You need people who truly know you. Um, you know, it, it's hard to ask somebody to help you make changes if they don't really know you're a So ask people who are close in. Ask, ask, ask your spouse. Ask a close family member. Ask, ask people who see you regularly. Ask the people you work closely with at work. Ask some of your closest friends. Ask people who, who do get a good look at you and then say, you know what, give me some feedback. People who truly know you. The third, people who see you from different perspectives. People who see you from different perspectives. Okay, again, full disclosure, sometimes we are not the same person at home, at work, uh, out uh, at the gym. Um, you know, we, we sometimes have shades of the different person that we are. Um, and so sometimes we need a little bit different perspective, you know, because again, the, the, we, we may, you know, we may at, at the bank or wherever, we may put on a, a nice smiley face and we may be very kind and pleasant, but sometimes at home, um, you know, we're not so kind and pleasant and we need people with different perspectives on us who can help us develop. We talk about integrity. Integrity is this congruency that wherever we are, we are the same person. And so that's why we need people, people of different perspective. Okay. The, again, the big idea, decide what are the biggest and best changes that you need to make. And how do you find them? You seek God, do a you review and ask a few of those who are closest to you. Last step, step number seven, commit to change as a journey and not a destination. Commit to change as a journey and not a destination. Um, let me read a passage of scripture. I love this first. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18. Uh, this is from the New Living Translation. He, Paul says, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the, glo the glory of the Lord. Listen to this. And the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Um, I circled on my notes that phrase makes us more and more like him. And here's the idea behind that. Um, sometimes when we think about change, we think about it simply moving from here to there. Um, but change is an ever evolving process. Um, in another version translation when, when, for this verse from Paul, uh, it's translated uh, that he is changing us with an ever increasing glory. In other, in other words, that that process never, never stops, uh, you know, and, and, and so I'm, I'm, when I'm, when I'm asking God to change me, it's not just about moving from here to there. It's about moving from here to there, to there, to there, to there. It is an ever evolving thing. Now, again, why that becomes so important is when you think about this year and you think about some of the goals you have for yourself, one of the things that happens is that sometimes we set very lofty goals and we set, set very, we set the bar very high, which is great. But what happens when you don't hit it? What happens when you don't, and, and, because here's what happens. Well, sometimes we set this bar really high. We set this goal really high. We have this really wonderful image and, and we make a lot of progress. We go forward, but we don't reach what we want to do. And sometimes when we do that, we feel like failures. Look at me, but you're not. You're just thinking about it wrong. You thought the destination was the goal, but it's not. The goal is moving forward. You want progress, not perfection. Let me say that again. What you're looking for is progress, not perfection. Um, several years back, um, when I left North Hills as senior pastor, I spent uh, a few years doing uh, full-time coaching with church planters and pastors. And I was working for a group called Church Multiplication Association. And because I was moving into a different arena, um, rather than simply preaching and managing a congregation, I really felt like I needed to really focus and grow on what good coaching looked like. And so I, I decided I was traveling almost every other week. I was, you know, flying somewhere across country and I was going to be in the air a lot, traveling a lot. So I decided I'm going to have a lot more time to read now that I'm doing this. 
And so what I decided was, um, I, I set a goal for myself. I wanted to read a book a week. I wanted to go through a book a week. Now that's a really aggressive goal for, you know, for those of us who don't read a lot. Um, so I set that goal for myself. And at the end of the year, I had read 42 books. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that's not 52 books. I didn't make a, a book a week. But I read more books in that year than I had any other year in my life. And so, again, was that a success? Of course it was. It was a huge success. Did I make my goal? No, I didn't make my goal. But I moved myself in learning a long way toward becoming the kind of coach that I wanted to be. And that's what I want to say to you. You know, we set these goals. We, we, we set a goal like we want to, I'm going to read the Bible every day, you know, this year. And uh, then what happens is we hit a day when we don't and we want to quit. No, 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 keep reading. So what? So if you get to the end of the year and you didn't read it 365 days, if you only read the Bible 300 days out of the year, wouldn't that be a huge addition to your life? Or let's say you set a goal for yourself that, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds this year. And let's say you work at that and you have some good days and bad days, but you start chipping away and you get to the end of the year and, and you've only lost 30 30 pounds. Well, that's still 30 pounds lighter than you were a year ago. No, it didn't. You didn't hit your goal, but you know what? You were a huge success. That's how you have to think of it. Uh, progress, not perfection. Now, why this is so important in our journey of faith, whether we're working on our temper or whether we're working on behavior or attitudes, whatever it might be, or we're working on some of the habits of faith, the devil will always remind you of how awful you were and how far you have to go. The devil will always remind you of how awful you were and how far you have to go. God will always remind you of how gracious he is and how far you've come. Because I promise you, you set some good, strong goals for yourself and you fall just a little bit short of those goals. I promise you, you're going to hear the words from God. Well done. Well done. Matthew 8, 11, 28, 29, here's what Jesus says. Let this be a, a great encouragement to you today as we wrap up. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I, and I love this verse, and here's one of the reasons why. Those words, come, take and learn uh, are all in the present tense in the Greek. I and mean, here's what it means. Jesus says, come and keep on coming. Take and keep on taking. Learn and keep on learning. Uh, change is, is not a destination. It's a journey. God wants to shape you each and every day of your life, all the way till the day when we get to be with him. And when we get to be with him, guess what? Our change will become complete. Well, I hope that you have um, set some great goals for yourself this year. And uh, I hope that these seven steps to becoming a new you will be an encouragement and maybe a little bit of a map on how do you get from here to there. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each person who um, is just taking a little bit of time out of their day to, to tune in, whether they're watching this live or whether they're going to watch this later. Uh, Father, I pray that as they watch this, that you would just speak to their heart. Lord, remind them today, you love them just as they are. If they didn't ever change a bit, you, you, you would not love them any less. In fact, you will never love them any more than you already do. And you accept them just as they are. But your desire for us, God, is that we become all that you have intended us to be. And so, Lord, I pray. I pray that you would reveal to each of us the, the growth that we need to make in our life. I pray that you would help us to begin to see clearly some of the changes that we need to make so that we can be more uh, like you 
Um, Father, I pray that you would help us to see the steps that we need to take, um, the systems we need to put into place, the habits we need to form in order to become that person. Lord, I pray today that you would put your hand on each person's shoulder because what I know is the day that we decide that we're going to move forward in our faith, that's the day that the enemy is going to rear up and he's going to do everything he can to discourage us and distract us and defeat us. But today, Lord, we rebuke him in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for each person here. I pray that this year, 2021, will be a year of breakthrough for them. I pray, Father, that they will uh, 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 go higher than they've ever gone, that they will go further than they've ever gone. I pray, Lord, that I know that there are people who have been struggling with some things for years, and I pray that this year will be the year that you break the chains and set them free. Uh, Father, whatever you do in our life, whatever changes we do make, whatever uh, grain, ga ground we do gain this year, Lord, we want you to know we give you all the glory, all the credit, all the honor, because we couldn't do any of this without you. We love you so much, Lord, and it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for, for tuning in. If you didn't put your name in the comments, please take time to do that. Uh, again, if you want my notes that I've done over these last several weeks for this series from the seven steps, I'll be happy to send them to you via Facebook or from email. All you got to do is uh, send me a note, put it in the comments and tell me how you want it delivered to you. Be happy to get those to you. Uh, just a couple other things. If you want to watch the one other ones in this series that you've missed, uh, go to my website, godswordforyoutoday.com. Go down to Straight from the Heart. You can watch that. Also, you can see my Sunday stuff. I want to remind you again, I said this at the beginning. If you didn't catch my message from Sunday on when the path gets scary, just want to really encourage you to watch that. I think you can find some great encouragement on how God can come alongside of you when fear begins to grip your life. If you'll do me one favor, if this has blessed you in any way, would you share this on your Facebook page? Share this video on your Facebook page. Let's get some other people an opportunity to tune in and may God speak to them. Hey, I'll see you next Wednesday at noon. God bless you guys. I love you so much. We'll see you then.